Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashikaran and welcome back for another video. Today I'm setting up my weekly spreads for April. As you can see, I've already set up my weekly for the first week of the month, so March 29th through to April 4th. I decided to have this one as part of my April pages, just given that four of the seven days fell within April for my Monday start weekly. But in this video, I'm going to be setting up the remaining four. One of the things that I always find with my weekly spreads for any given month is that if I use the same layout week after week, I start to get really bored. I love trying new layouts, especially weeklies. But in March, I used the same layout three weeks in a row and quickly became uninspired. Don't get me wrong, it's a good layout and I do like it. Just using it over and over isn't something that works for me. Given that preference though, in April I'm using four different styles of weekly layout. Three of these are going to be full spreads, while one is a single page layout. That one I'll be using for the holiday period, as I know I'll have less to write in compared to usual, so less space required. You'll notice as we go through that I'm keeping the same colour palette and design elements that I used in my April monthly pages. So pinks, brown and black with craft paper elements, washi tape and headers that I made on the computer. If you wanted more details on how I made those headers to fit my journal properly, make sure to check out the video that I have related to that which is linked in the description box below. In some of the layouts I'll also be including simple doodles of cherry blossom trees to go with my cherry blossom theme. Which again, I'm pretty sure there's like 500 people doing this theme this month, but I'm not mad. It's pretty, I like it. <laughs> All of those repeated elements though are helping to make the pages of the month look cohesive even though they have different layouts. In terms of my simple cherry blossom tree doodles though, I first start with a pencil sketch so I know where I want any of the branches to go. I find the style that I can most easily work with is having one branch that splits into smaller branches. Pretty much any time there's a split in my branch, I make a loose Y shape. So we don't have one long straight branch with parts coming off it, but more like a series of Y shapes. When it comes to actually penning this in, I've been using my Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen for this. Because this is a hard tip brush pen, it means I still have good control with it, while getting the variation in my line thickness that helps make the branches look more organic. As I fill in the branches, I try to make it so that the base branch is the thickest, and we taper out into smaller branches at the ends. Anywhere the branch splits, I also try to make the change in direction smooth by adding some rounding where one branch meets another. Once I'm happy with the layout of the branches, it's then time to add in some cherry blossoms. I found that for these smaller trees, it's easier just to add some colored dots to represent the blossoms rather than drawing out each flower individually. So they kind of end up looking like buds. For these, I just take my Tombow Jewel Brush Marker and align it so that the tip touches the end of the branch. When I press my pen down on an angle, I get a shape that looks kind of like a little teardrop, which is also a pretty perfect shape for the blossom bud. I'll add these all over the tree, anywhere I want them, and then also maybe include a few that are not attached, so just to look like those petals are kind of floating away in the wind. I could leave it like this, but I also like to add just a little more depth by applying another layer of the same Tombow at the pointed end of the bud, so where it was attached to the tree. This just gives the bud slash petals a little more dimension. Hopefully all that made sense, if not with my explanation, then hopefully with the visuals. But this weekly is finished and it's over the page onto our next one for April 12th through to 18th. To start this one off, I'm just going in and sticking in those printed headers that I've made. If you were ever wondering why I don't typically pencil in my layouts on camera, here's a glimpse as to why. It literally took me 13 minutes just to decide where I wanted to place these headers on my spread. While all of the other layouts that I had in today's setup were already penciled in, this one I decided to take the kind of wing it approach. Can't really say that worked out too well, there was certainly a lot of umming and ahhing and going back and forth about where I wanted things to go. Yeah, there's a very good reason as to why my things are typically penciled in before I hit record. I actually really enjoyed having all of my weeklies set up at the start of the month in February, but in March I thought I'd try going back to the make one per week approach. Can't say that worked very effectively, 
I really found that I wasn't using my journal consistently during the month, though this was likely in part because March was really busy, and I always find that when I'm most busy, that's when I use my journal the least. Although April likely won't be quite as busy, I still thought it would be beneficial to have all of my weeklies set up at the start of the month. This will hopefully free up some of my time during the month of April, and also make me more inclined to use my journal, given that it's already got spread set up for me. Talking about March busyness though, and reasons why my journal didn't get as used as much as I'd have liked, this issue was also very likely impacted by the burnout that I could feel myself heading towards. This is an ongoing issue for me, trying to balance teaching with running this channel, and then all of the other non-work related things that you're supposed to do as a person, like have a social life, and sleep, taking care of yourself, etc. Thankfully in April we not only had the long weekend for Easter, but the term break is also coming up, so I'm hoping to use that time not only to rest, but also to get a little ahead on some of the work that I have for term 2 just so that then, during the term, I don't feel as time pressured. I know that I didn't get anywhere near as much preparation done over the summer break that I would have liked to, which is also probably why term 1 felt as busy as it did. I'll be the first to admit that I do have a little bit of an issue where it comes to feeling guilty after the holiday breaks, for not having used them as productively as I could have. I do have to consistently remind myself that they are breaks for a reason, but I do also know that my during term well-being is very much impacted by how much I've prepared during those breaks. Speaking about holidays though, we're now onto the one page weekly that I'm going to be using during the term break. The spread that I have here is going to have two weeks on it, so one on the left, one on the right. These two layouts are kind of mirror images of each other, so they have the same elements in essentially the same places, but while the mini calendar and trackers on one are on the right, on the other, they're on the left. To really lean into that kind of mirror image slash opposites kind of thing, I also reversed the colours for all of the headers on one page compared to the other. This layout's actually a recreation of one of my first weekly spreads that I did back in my first bullet journal. Although in that one I was using the LT 1917 rather than the Archer and Olive, and I had slightly different trackers, the general structure of the layout is the same. As I said before, for the holidays I'm going with one page weeklies, just because I know I won't have quite as much to record. Vogel and I are also taking a trip during that time, so there's going to be even less tasks and to-dos to record. Question of the day for you guys though, what is something that you're looking forward to in April? For me it's of course the term break and the holiday that Vogel and I are going to be taking, but I'd love to hear about what you guys have coming up as well. For the final flip through though, we have the first week of April with the craft paper daily boxes. We have the second week with our little quote. The third week that has craft paper for the to-do list and the doodle. And then our dual one page weekly layouts. I'm really looking forward to getting to use all of these different styles of weekly spread, as I said in March. Using the same one over and over got a little stale, and I'm particularly excited because some of these layouts I haven't used before. If you had a favourite one of the layouts that I've made, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye!